As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. After you've had repeated exchanges with a strongly narcissistic individual, it just becomes glaringly obvious to you that it doesn't take much at all to throw that person off their game. Narcissists carry an ongoing undertow of irritability and agitation and annoyance, and it doesn't take much at all for them to be triggered. And whenever there is a strain and difficulty, they keep pressing you to do whatever you have to do to make them feel good. But ultimately, all of this agitation and emotional dysregulation speaks of one very large problem that they have, and that is they don't know how to cope. Now, they absolutely will not say that out loud. Uh, when you show yourself to be too other or too different, they won't say, I don't know what to do with that. Instead, what they do is they just make you the, uh, the, the problematic person, and they try to fit you into whatever kind of scheme that they have in mind. But in fact, it's going to be so essential for you to realize this is not about you. They're responsibility for, responsible for who they are, not you. And I want us to zero in on four very common uh, elements that are on the inside of uh, narcissists that explain why they have such poor coping skills. Now, the first thing I want to zero in on is when a person is in that narcissistic pattern, they have uh, almost no expansive thinking. Now, when we say expansive thinking, uh, in, uh, the opposite of that is they, they live with a very, very fixed and tight agenda. Here's the way things have to be. They're, they're, they have that real strong need to be the dominant person. They, they will quickly invalidate you. And so they make little to no room for nuance rather than thinking, you know, there are, there are a lot of different things we need to consider here. Let, let's talk. Uh, instead, they make lots of uh, comments of criticism. And the way it plays out, it, uh, and see if this sounds very familiar to you, is when you're working on a task with them, for example, they're going to bring a let's do it my way kind of mentality, no expansive thinking. Or when you have a discussion about opinions or perspective, again, instead of being expansive, it's like, no, I already have my mind made up. Just do what I tell you to do. Or instead of meeting challenges with a, a brainstorming session, uh, it's like, well, we're going to meet the challenges the way I say it needs to be. And so they have an astonishing low ability to put their thoughts out there and say they want to have your thoughts and let's see if we can blend and harmonize. It, it just simply doesn't happen. Now, a second reason that narcissists have very difficult, uh, great difficulty in their coping skills is they bring a very low level of self-awareness to the equation. And when I say self-awareness, you know, we, we each need to have a, a sense of honesty about who we are. But let's keep in mind that one of the defining features of narcissism is that they have to protect their own false self. They, they build an image of who they want people to think that they are. And as a result, if you, if you see something that's not consistent with that, then that, that really blows them away. And instead of saying, well, you know, I, I have a lot of things that I need to grow and learn about, they can't and they won't do it. They don't take responsibility for who they are. They, they're not reliable when it comes to relational kind of issues because that lack, lack of self-awareness keeps their focus external, which is you, as opposed to internal. So what this means is in the midst of differences, you're the one who's labeled as miserable or they uh, repeatedly show you how they're stuck in a rut in the way that they engage with you. They, they give you the same dysfunctional or uh, 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 unhelpful responses repeatedly and predictably, and they actually exhibit an inflated, illogical ego. It's like, why do you have such a huge notion of who you are 
they have to be the one that's in the know, even when they don't really know. So their lack of self-awareness uh, is part of their inability to cope. Now, another uh, key ingredient that, that keeps uh, narcissists from being able to, uh, to, to cope well is they, they have next to no conception of teamwork. One of the primary ingredients that uh, makes relationships go well is to have this sense that says, I feel what I feel, but you feel what you feel. I have my uh, interpretations, but you have yours. By the way, we have a word for that. That's uh, it's empathy, where we learn how to tune in with each other uh, with an understanding of that other person's perspective in mind. Instead of that, narcissists with their uh, poor coping skills they start with the assumption that says, it's your job to conform to me. And so your otherness uh, throws them off. They have a stubborn refusal to even consider who you are and what you feel and what your backstory is. Uh, they will show uh, a passive aggressive kind of style whenever you uh, uh, don't uh, give them what they want. They, they have an astonishingly low uh, sense of curiosity they don't care what you bring to the equation. Uh, blending, teamwork, harmonizing, all of that that's part of empathy, it's just not in the equation for them. They do not bring that, that uh, characteristic to the table with you. And then a fourth primary reason that narcissists have such difficulty to cope, and, and this is a really big one, and that is they have no appreciation for your desire to choose. In other words, freedom, at least your freedom, scares them. Now, it, it would be really interesting when I was in my counseling practice and I'd have these real high control people in my uh, counseling office, I would actually throw out that word freedom. I might say something like that other person has the freedom to think and feel as they do. Can you acknowledge that? And you would think that I was using one of the craziest words ever, freedom. No, I don't want to give them freedom. What, what are you doing talking to me about their freedom? I mean, that's going to lead to chaos. And that's how they think when, in fact, freedom is simply defined as the privilege to choose. And people are at their best when they have options in front of them. It doesn't mean you don't have consequences or stipulations or boundaries. But uh, when, when it comes to engaging well with others, you want to start with the assumption, I like to have my privilege to choose. I know you do. So uh, their inability to um, appreciate your need for freedom keeps them in this overbearing and harsh and condescending kind of way. And as a result, they tend to, uh, to lean towards authoritarianism uh, because uh, it's like, well, if I just do all the thinking, that's going to solve that problem. And so the net result is uh, in their inability to cope because of these four primary ingredients, they will bring, especially to conflict, a mindset that says, I'm going to show you who's boss, or I have to neutralize you, or uh, I'm going to make life miserable for you if you don't do what I say. And you're over there thinking, can't you just appreciate me for what I am? Which is a legitimate kind of question, by the way. But as we consider who they are and what they bring to the equation, I think you're going to have to remind yourself there's a, a very, especially with that low self-awareness factor in there, there's a very low probability that you're going to say the golden words that are going to cause them to turn around. That being the case, I'm hoping that you can decide, well, I do know how to cope and I do know how to manage differences. And it all starts with my interior, what I believe about who I am and what I know about myself. And I want to run through some thoughts that I hope that you can lock down on that would uh, become a part of your good coping skills, and it would be a great contrast to where that narcissist is coming from. For example, as you're trying to figure out what your coping skills are going to consist of, I hope that you can think to yourself, if I have to give up who I am to appease that other person, we both lose. My uniqueness is a good thing. The narcissist may not think so, but I do. I think that my uniqueness is something that is good and necessary. I make no apology uh, for who I am. I don't have to defend myself. Um, my simple statement on that is, why should I defend that which needs no defense? 
I will accept and coordinate with those who differ from me. I like growing and stretching. And uh, the bottom line is I know that I don't know everything. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to bring a willingness to the equation. Um, but I feel no particular need to tell the other person, that narcissist, what he or she is supposed to be. Um, I don't want to give them the, uh, uh, the overbearing treatment that I don't want from them. I don't do it that way. When it's clear uh, that I'm not going to be able to satisfy that narcissist, then my response is, that's that person's loss. And it's not my problem to have to solve. I'm willing, like I say, to hear them out. I'm willing to consider their words, but ultimately I'm going to make the final determination for who I'm going to be. I refute hatred. I refute disrespect. I refute condescension. I don't want to be that way, nor do I want to be on the receiving end of that. When you bring those kind of ingredients with your lack of coping skills, that's on you. It's not something that I'm going to get myself bogged into. Instead, I'm going to be a person that emphasizes love and acceptance and inclusion. I'm in a lifelong learning process. I love being uh, being challenged with good ideas and, and I have a willingness to blend and to grow. Uh, I'm going to respond to tensions uh, in a way that's going to lead towards good results. That's who I am. I'm a member of Team Healthy. I stand for dignity, respect, and civility. And I find it sad to the point of pitiable that the narcissist is simply going to remain stuck in archaic, non-productive attitudes. It's sad that they have such a low coping capability, but the bottom line is uh, I can only work on one person, and that's me. I can, I can do the best that I can to be a, a blending person with the other individual, but when the narcissist implies I can't cope, my response is going to be, okay, be you. But then my next door response is going to be, but in the meantime, I'm going to be me. I can cope. I hope that as you have awareness of what you're dealing with and what this person is bringing to you and what your alternatives can be, that this is going to be something that can cause you to have the, that, you know, next level, uh, uh element of growth. I, I'm so pleased to be a part of your journey with you. If you've not hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We'll keep more videos coming with you. Uh, Gus, Gus been working on his coping skills for a while. I think he's got it down. Gus and I'll bring more videos to you. You know, sometimes you have a need for therapy when you're up against something like this. And if you do, uh, we have a sponsor, the people at betterhelp.com that could assist you with online therapy. It's very uh, convenient and people have uh, gotten to where they really like it that way. It's affordable. And so we have a link below that will take you to online therapy. And if, like I say, if that's a need, then I would strongly encourage you to go in that direction. Also, we have my courses. And, and when I say courses there, it's like signing up for a class, video classes. Uh, that uh, that have uh, multiple videos uh, per course with teaching documents and questions that, are, that will guide you toward a therapeutic goal. Uh, we have This Is Me, uh, which is all about setting boundaries. We have Free To Be, Finding Yourself Despite Those Controllers, uh, uh, Ready, Set, Connect, about having connection skills. Uh, we also have uh, my podcast, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's growing now, and I'm very pleased with the way it's going, and my books and other resources are our uh, website that has many articles. Uh, I'm, again, uh, uh, avail yourself to all of that. Narcissists, with all of their agitation and irritability, they prove over and over that they have such uh, poor and undeveloped coping skills. I'm hope that that, hoping that rather than you mirroring that in reverse, that you can decide, you know, I, I know who I am. And I'm going to have confidence and trust in who I am. And in doing so, it, it uh, positions you to be a person of steadiness despite their lack of it. And in the end, I'm hoping that you can consistently become a person of peace.